welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, friend. Well, you made it to Friday again. Thank you so much for being part of our broadcast today. I hope that you are having a good day in the Lord. I hope you had a great week in the Lord and are looking forward to being in God's house this coming Lord's Day. If you can right now, reach over and get your Bible and join me. My Bible sits open to the book of Hebrews in chapter 6. Hebrews and chapter 6. I'll be reading there in a moment. But before I do that, let me lead into our Bible study time this way. In in recent years, a number, I mean a number of Bible-believing churches have started doing what the liberal non-Bible-believing churches had done a long time ago. More and more churches are cutting off church services. They are putting an end to evening services and sometimes even Sunday school times as well. Now, in all frankness, some churches that are doing this are replacing these services with other things that are not all bad. But my point is this. We have a growing Bible illiteracy among those who claim Christ as their Savior. And this is happening in part, in part now, because we are providing less and less teaching to the people from our pulpits and in our classrooms. But also, we are not using our services as well as we can. We preachers are not providing our folk with the preparation they need to defend key Bible truths as our people go out among the unsaved folk around them. Those in Christian leadership need to be fostering a joy of learning in our churches, and frankly, doing this is not rocket science. I say all this because today we are going to see another of the critical Bible truths on which every child of God must have a firm grip. So tell me, tell me honestly, when on a scale of one to 10, where one is bad and 10 is tremendous, just how effective do you think you are at defending the resurrection of of Jesus Christ. That's where we're headed today. Get your Bible and join me, please. Get something to write with and write on as we come to the book of Hebrews in the opening three verses. Before I read there, I want to encourage you to get from us a free sample packet of our gospel tracts. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, telling a sinner that they are a sinner, telling them what their sin has done to them and how Christ has done the work on Calvary's cross to free them from their sin, free them from the condemnation, and give them the gift of eternal life. At the end of our broadcast, my announcer is going to make known to you three different ways by which you can communicate with us, giving us your name and your mailing address. And if you'll do that, we will send you that complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. One of the tracks that is in that sample packet is in my hand right now. It's entitled, Have You Found Rest? The front cover has a, an old rocking chair sitting on the front porch of a country home, just the picture of rest. But this gospel track is going to lay out the fact that Jesus is our rest. We don't find rest in a religious ceremony. We don't find rest for our soul in being moral and having high standards of morality, those things being well and good in and of themselves. But the rest for our soul is when you and I come to Christ. That's why Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This gospel track lays out the fact that rest can be had for your soul. In the midst of turmoil and strife, there can be rest in your soul because you know you are rightly related to God Almighty 
through his son, Jesus, the son of God, the Messiah. Great gospel track. Have you found rest? Get it from us. Be ready when my announcer gives that contact information. Also, why don't you ask about some of the sets of CD studies, our Bible studies on CDs they've compiled together. I think they'll be a great help to your walk in the Lord. Come with me now. The book of uh, Hebrews, please, in chapter 6, all week long we've been here. The opening three verses say this, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. I never started out with the plan of spending four days on these three verses, but here we are. So I have to ask the question, why is it that these three verses ended up getting such a great deal of attention here in the broadcast? Well, I titled this section of verses this way, the directional prod, a directional prod. And the main point of these three verses is found there in verse one, where it says, go on to perfection. And all week long, I have said that that word perfection is the Greek word that for completion or for maturity. The charge being given here by the Spirit of God is to prod believers to be mature saints and not just shrinking away during troublesome times as their Christian walk is tested. In the end of chapter 5 of Hebrews, the Holy Spirit tells these believers that they had been saved long enough and had been taught well enough that by now they should be teachers, able to teach others. So, my sub-outline for these three verses boiled down to two words, two words beginning with the letter G. One was the word go, as in go on to maturity, and the second one was ground, be grounded, referring to the three key truths mentioned here that every young believer should be grounded in to stabilize their walk in the Lord. Verses 1 and 2 have three sets of couplets or three pairs of statements, and each pair highlights one key doctrinal basic truth every saint needs to know and needs to have a grip on. The first one is found in these words, repentance and faith in verse 1. It answers the question, how am I made part of God's family? The second couplet is in verse 2, based upon the words baptisms and laying out of hands. These two things state or answer the question, how can I be sure that I am clean and that God has approved of me and my cleanliness before him? But now we come to the third couplets. There in verse 2, we find the resurrection and eternal judgment. This couplet goes together. This couplet answers the question, what happens to people after they die? And by the way, in that sample packet of tracts, we have a gospel tract entitled, Where Are the Dead? That actually straightforwardly answers this question as it leads into the gospel presentation. But Here in chapter 6, in this context, the key point that is uh, being made here is that grounding new believers in the truth of Christ's resurrection and what it means to believers becomes a crucial point. Every single child of God needs to have this truth embedded in their heart, mind, and soul. The Jews, the vast majority of Jews anyway, did believe in the truth of the resurrection of the dead. They did believe that God would raise the righteous to eternal joy and raise the wicked to punishment. Now, if you want to see upon the verses upon which they they founded these things, you can go to three references here. I'm going to give them. I'm not going to read them, but you jot them down. Here they are. The first one is Job 1925, Job 1925. Second, Isaiah 26, 19. Isaiah 26, 19. And the last one, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. There are other places, but those are three key ones. Now, come back here to Hebrews chapter 6. One of the foundational building blocks for every child of God to deal with and to be able to defend is the resurrection of Jesus and then know how his resurrection impacts us both now as well as in the future. 
perhaps you are one that has been safe for, oh, let's say five years or so, but you would be hard pressed to be able to defend why you believe Jesus bodily arose from the dead. Now, if so, I want to politely say that I doubt it's because you have lacked being taught on this topic. Every year at Easter time, almost every church I know of that loves the Bible teaches on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The reason you may be unable to defend it is not because you've not been taught. It's because so many believers have never applied themselves to know their Bible. We need to help one another do two things. Two things. One is this, to know key Bible truths. And secondly, we need to help each other to be able to defend these Bible truths. And by the way, what a great opportunity for a Sunday night service to make it interactive, helping our people defend key Bible truths. So, how would I, if I was your pastor, how would I go about to ground you in the truth of Jesus's bodily resurrection? Let me give you five things. Number one, I would have you go and become just doggone knowledgeable about Luke chapter 24 and John chapter 20, two chapters on the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus's resurrection was real, a physical resurrection, a real physical resurrection. Jesus allowed his disciples to touch him. He ate fish and so on. We need to obviously tie in 1 Corinthians 15, but I would have you know Luke 24 and John 20. Secondly, I would grind into your mind and heart, Luke chapter 23, verses 55 and 56. There, Jesus' followers saw him buried. They knew he was dead. They were not anticipating the resurrection. They were sorrowful at his death. This whole idea that Jesus' followers stole his body, it just doesn't hold water. They were just uh, downfallen over the fact that he died. Number three, I would have you turn to Matthew chapter 27, verses 40, 64 and 65. There the Jews made the Roman government set a seal and a watch over the tomb. No allowance was going to be made for some people to come and steal the body. The body wasn't stolen. The Roman government made sure it wasn't stolen. Number four, Matthew chapter 28. The guards themselves at the tomb knew the tomb was empty and they knew nobody stole the body. And then lastly, I would have us go to the book of Acts chapter 2, verses uh, verses 22 to 24, and then verse 36, where Peter boldly preached to those people who saw Jesus die that they knew uh, he had risen from the dead. And this resurrection proves that Jesus is Well, let me just read to you Acts chapter 2, verse 20, uh, verse 36. It says this, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Jesus is proven to truly be the Messiah, the Son of God, because he bodily arose from the dead. Dear believer friend, if you've been saved for very long at all, one of the truths, the foundational truths that you must be able to defend on a moment's notice is why you believe Jesus Christ bodily arose from the dead. He died on the cross. His blood was shed. He was buried, but he bodily arose. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.